Hello. Hi, everybody. Thank you so much for joining me. This is episode six of the Hour of Design. This is a very special Hour of Design episode. Um, I'm very excited, so let's get started. Um, get in on the conversation, tweet, hashtag live design, use the live chat on YouTube, all those things, you know that by now. Uh, I'm going to get right to it because I fear that we will not have enough time today. So let's get to it. Um, so this is a special edition of Hour of Design because I will be helping uh, a very, very cool... Um, little organization called Ride With Me. So if you go to ridewit.me, it's actually posted on the notes um, on YouTube. So you, you got those. Uh, Ride With Me is, is, a, is a very, very nice uh, app in which, as I can, as it, oh my goodness, you just saw my code. I feel naked. I feel naked. There we go. It helps, it's a point-to-point peer-to-peer transportation solution for youth. So it helps youth coordinate transportation options and not just that but it also provides peace of mind for guardians or parents and of course it del- delivers information about the youth attending programs uh, events and service providers even like gps location as well for parents and guardians uh, so it's it's very um very interesting what ride with me is about and if you want to take a look at the team behind ride with me uh take a look at uh ride with me slash our team which is right here All these wonderful people are the ones responsible for the work that has been going on here. Uh, I just came aboard, on board, and I spoke to Robert. Robert is is kind of the left-hand side. I spoke to Robert. I said, you know, we spoke. We said, let's figure out a way for us to work together, and we figured that our design was going to be the perfect avenue for this. Uh, So I'm very excited to be working on this. Um, I estimate that this will take us about two hour design sessions, so this week and next week. And uh, what I will be doing is uh, we will be going 88 miles an hour, as, as I have written here. I'm going to help this project by creating an interface style guide. So, um, you know, I'm an interface designer and my expertise is building interfaces. So um, when I saw the, the progression of this app, I, I realized that, you know, there could be some, some, some style guide that I could create and then the team can take on, evolve and, and scale you know, uh, as the needs require or as the situation arises. Of course, I can, I can still help, obviously, but, um, but it would be great to start that off, right? Now, some, uh, as the creative process is, is normally done, uh, mood boards start out, you know, there's, they, they give us a high-level overview of, of really what we want to, to, to you know, Mess, communicate and, and what the message really is of this branding and of the app that has already been done I haven't done a thing here so Marina Malone who is the lead designer in the project has created uh, this one and another one as well that I will show you once you open up the sketch um, document that I have prepared so these mood boards have already been done and you know some for me for someone like me, this is, this is gold, you know, this is perfect because I already know the aspirations. I already know the tone, um, what we really want to be, to be, you know, communicating across with colors, with texture, with, you know, corners, with borders, all these things that make up an interface. So this is excellent work that has been done already. Um, we have also fantastic logo ideas by David Miller. He's a designer at the Adler Planetarium in Chicago. I will show you that a little bit later on. They're really, really, really great. That is something that um, I definitely need work on is, is iconography and creating graphic elements. Um, he knocked that out of the park. It, it, it's awesome. So let's get started. Cool. Four minute introduction. That's awesome. Usually it takes me like 15. So um, we're, we're doing some really good time. We're going to do, be doing three things. We're going to be doing color explorations, type explorations, and... Number three is button treatments as well. Um, also, g- important to note, is this is a special hour design because also the whole team is with me here. So we're using Slack, and we're using Slack to, um, to communicate with each other. So right now, Robert just told me that I forgot to put in the notes, of course, of the, um, of the show. So... I'm going to paste it to the team here. Boop. There we go. Uh, and I'm actually going to move this a little bit to the side. Uh, and um, I will update the YouTube link as well. So, um, 
Those are the three things that we're going to be doing, going back to the show. Color explorations, type explorations, and if time does allow, we're going to start on button treatments. I, I hope that we can start it. I don't expect to finish it because we, um, color is, is huge and, you know, takes takes a while. So let's see. I've never done this live um, before. I've never actually created a style guide live. Usually this is very a very private moment, you know, like you 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 mess around a lot, you... It looks terrible for most of the time until it starts looking a little bit better. Um, so let's let's hope that this works well. Um, okay, cool. Yeah, thank you, Mike Conley. Thanks. Yeah, the one time I forgot to put it. Um, okay, so let's get started. I have already created a sketch file here, a document. So this I'm going to take you through this document very quickly. On the left hand side, we have Marina's. Um, mood boards. So I showed you this one that she created. She also created another one, more graffiti, like more street. I love this one as well. Um, I'm going to be taking a lot from this. I can already, I can already tell. Over on this side, I created a, just an empty, an empty style guide. I will open sources later on. So you have something to start off building your style guides and building your, your visual language. But you can see here, I have right with me, I have a style guide, we have color palettes, we have six colors, and then I have like, like this little, you'll see it when we fill it up. It looks good. You know what? It sort of looks like what Marina created. Sort of like this actually, is what it, it ends up looking like. Um, so that's what that is for. We have typography, I have heading, body treatment, and another type of body treatment as well. Sort of like copy treatment. I should, you know, there should be like subheadlines, there should be body, anyway. And then we have buttons that you can see is like completely bare. This is on purpose, obviously, because we're going to be creating it right now. Um, also on the right-hand side here, I have a sample. I created this like very quickly, um, a sample screen from the app, something that, that can help me iterate on it. Like, you know, if, if, if yellow looks amazing, well, let's try it on. You know, let's try it on, in the interface um, as, as we do it, things like that. So... It'll come in handy, believe me. And then this, I have a scratch board. Scratch board is just where we will start talking and we will start exploring things and um, it'll, look, it'll look ugly, but it's okay. We're in it together. So let's get started. So first thing that we're going to do is color. Now, color is, is, is the driving force behind a brand, right? Behind an interface. It really is what, what speaks to one as soon as one sees a product or one sees an experience it's extremely important and i find that we have a dual approach here with the right with me because not only not only do we have an app that is meant to be fun is that is meant to be enjoyed by youth uh, oop, concept i'm sorry i'm gonna go concept here there we go for youth you know not only should it be fun but it should also give a sense of trust. You know, this is the trust that gardens are looking for, right? Gardens want to be, you know, want to use an app that they can trust. Youth also want to feel, uh, want to use an app that they can feel safe with. Not just that, but they also want to have fun. They want to explore their city, Chicago in this case, right? They want to explore things. So that is what I can, what I initially, what I saw with right with me is this duality, this like dichotomy. Uh, the two motifs playing hand in hand. And that is what I'm going to start off with. Um, that, is, that is why I'm choosing the initial colors. Initial colors I'm gonna choose are warm colors. The reason why we're gonna choose warm colors is because they need to command vitality. They also need to be welcoming and they need to be energetic as well. So there's this one link here. It says color, it's, it's very very lengthy document but it is a, a very good one so you all should read it i'm going to put it right here at the bottom of this links i always forget to do this there we go and i'm going to save it if you reload your page or your evernote document you will have it so this uh this document is actually great you know it, it i always read it um every once in a while to get me acquainted with colors once again and the meaning behind it and the emotions that they drive so you know i told you that i want to use red orange and yellow the reason why i want to use red orange and yellow is because all of them command attention and we want something that is energetic we want something that that can that can you know 
that can really bring people's attention. Um, not just that, but like, you know, take a look at this. When Marina sent me this, there's a lot of warmth in this, isn't it? Like, a lot of people find that streets are very cold. And yeah, I mean, we have a lot of blues happening here with like the cement, a lot of blues. But look at the, look at the artwork, for example, the artwork is warm. This right here, this is all warm. The, the pedestrian signal is warm. Uh, even this news, seems like a newspaper stand is warm as well. You know what I'm saying? Like it, it, it is asking for your attention, but it's not asking for your attention in a uh, danger, danger, you're gonna die. No, I mean, this, this pedestrian walkway, it just simply is commanding your attention and, and you, know, you want to interact with it. This is what I want to be creating with an interface like that. Not just that, but take a look at this, you know, Transit is using it, uh, uh, yeah, uh, red, again, we'll talk about the, the combination of the red and blue, which I think is fantastic, so um, I have a feeling that's where we will head to, but I, I shouldn't ruin it, right, we shouldn't go right to the end, let's explore, so let's go ahead, I'm going to create a, uh, check this out, so we're going to do, we do a reddish, red, and we're gonna do an orange because we, we talked about it. So let's see, and a yellow as well. That's, that's a good yellow. So when we take a look at these three different colors, we see that red, you know, red can be, especially, especially if we use a very bright red, it can say danger, right, to someone. It can, it can really uh, heighten the senses very, very quickly. Uh, red is also, common with violence and with warfare like ah you know if we use a very bright red so we want to tile it down uh dial it down a little bit um cool thank you thank you uh, robert and marina um so we want to dial it down a little bit that's the thing with the red right we don't want to use it too much and if we do use it too much it wants to be it wants to be a little bit subdued by another complementary color such as you got it blue and marina hit it on the nail with that one. So we'll talk about that a little bit later. Orange, orange is vibrant, right? It's energetic. It, it um, is actually more, um, when people think of orange, they think of autumn, they think of fall, they think of the seasons. And because of that, that color actually represents movement, right? Subconsciously, we, we represent movement with, with orange. Uh, orange also makes you very hungry if you combine it with blue. So there you go, that's one. Um, not just that, but orange is also very friendly and inviting. It is really the epitome of warmth. We might want to use it in what we want to do. It, 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 you know, there's a sense of warmth and safety there. We also have yellow. Yellow is very great with, for happiness. You know, it, it, it says happiness. It says, it says, uh, energy really sunshine. However, also yellow is, is, a, is number one, um, can be used for warning. And two, yellow is also seen as deceitful. Isn't that interesting? I actually don't have that association with yellow myself, but we shouldn't discount it, right? Um, you know, purple, for example, is, is seen as luxury in, in North American culture, but it's also seen as a, as a color of mourning in India. And just because myself, I am partial to yellow. We shouldn't just go with that. We, we need to investigate all of our color options and know exactly where this product will live. For us, this product will be, um, at least for now, based in North America. So uh, we, will, we will focus on those, on those symbolisms and those cultural meanings. Okay, enough of the exploration between warmth and and between uh, this is by the way uh this is a primary color this is a secondary color and this is a tertiary color so let's figure this out i want a, a red I, I actually do want a red um because i like i like you know i like the energy like look at this energy a lot of energy happening here um with the bike see this this outline of red is ah oh man it's so cool the brake lines are red as well i think those are brake lines um, really, there's a lot of energy in the red, you know, like the red, you can re very easily spot out and I want to use that. I want to use that to our advantage and I want, um, the app to, to display that. However, this yellow, this red, sorry, will not work for us. 
I, I do not like this red because it is far too serious and um, we could be doing something a little bit better. So I'm going to be uh, um, yeah, with some gold. We'll be back to red. So I'm going to be working with hue, saturation, and brightness. Um, I used to be work, I used to work with RGB, red, green, and blue values, but I found it to be very hard to find, especially the right, we'll talk about hue, we'll talk about saturation, value, tone, shade, uh, all those. Um, but I found it very hard to, to really play with the colors. So, you know, take a look right now, I just moved the, the hue from this value all the way to the bottom spectrum, and then I can start, start adding adding a little bit more hue to it until it becomes orange and then it becomes yellow then green and blue etc etc so i'm going to go back to a yellow i'm going to make it like maybe a five um, over here we have saturation so this is how pale it looks versus how vibrant it looks and you know what i do want something vibrant but that which is 100 percent is way too vibrant that is danger to me not just danger but that also like it hurts it hurts the eyes so you know what i want to bring it back down i want to bring it back down to 60 maybe that's a little bit too much too pale maybe 70 let's bring it back down to 70 and for the brightness brightness is how much white or black we're adding to that specific hue so if i add a lot of brightness that means if i add a lot of white um it almost looks salmon right there's like a, a neon salmon color happening here, uh, which is not my preferred. So take a look at this. What about something like this? I mean, you know, not too bad. It could work. Why am I, there we go, sorry. Um, it could work. I like it, but there's no way to know right now. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to duplicate this and I'm going to start working, start working, start teasing these colors out. Um, I want also to use yellow. And this yellow, I'm going to take from this mood board um, that Marina created. I'm going to take these colors. This is awesome. I know it's saturated, and this is not the true color of this pedestrian sign, but it doesn't matter. Um, I'm going to use that color. Uh, I just selected one. I'm going to select another one here. This is more orange, actually. What about this? So I have two, two colors here. I'm using this uh, tool called... Uh, the, whoops, what is it called? Color Snapper. Um, it is available for Mac. Amazing application. If you are a designer or if you're thinking of, of doing design, um, man, get it. Get it for sure. It's, it's a really, really good one. So I have this color right here that I took. I want to paste it. And now I have um, nice, not so nice, but I'll tell you why. Is this hue, this saturation is different than this saturation. See what I mean? So this is a little bit more pale, a little bit more calm. This is more bright and more saturated. So that will, will not work for us. As you can see here, we have 100% saturation, 100% brightness. That will not work when we're combining colors together. If a, a palette, for a palette to be considered harmonious or, or for it to be considered a part of one cohesive thing, then the saturation needs to be very similar to each other or else um, it, it'll look mismatched and one won't be able to really place a finger on why it's happening, but it is. So I want to bring back down, you know what, I'm going to back down to 70 and I want to bring it up, up, hmm. maybe so. Okay, here's where the game goes. It, it's gonna get it very interesting. Um, we're gonna add a cool color. And the reason why we're gonna add a cool color is because we're not, we're not really designing a, a fireplace. We're designing uh, a brand and a brand needs to have uh, an even keel, you know, even tones. So take a look at blue. Blue is very interesting because blue, Blue is actually sad, right? Blue, blue is sad. Blue, check this out. So, um, boop. here I have my, oh, that was a nice purple. I have, I'm very partial to purple. But there we go. I have a blue. That's sad. That's a little bit of a sad color. Um, but the very interesting thing of blue is that 
it changes so much based on the hue that you choose. So much. That's why in, in, in web design, they say that, you know, uh, the shade of blue will, will make a huge impact on how people perceive your product because bright blues, uh, bright blues versus dark blues versus saturated or, or unsaturated blues, um, they're so different and they, and they really do mean a lot. Um, they make a lot of difference. So something like this, and I show you something like, um, and I'm going to make uh, a very, very quick one here. What about a... Like that, right? What are the differences between these two? Well, this one is a little bit melancholic. It's a little bit sad. It's, it's really, it's, it's what blue is, really. But this one is more friendly. It's more inviting. It's energetic. It sort of makes you want to go outside and see if the sky really is that tint of blue, right? So very, very different is uh, but blue um, is from the rest of, of the colors in the spectrum what I'm going to do. I'm going to use that blue. Um, if you take a read at the document that I, that I sent over, blue is not only good for melancholy, but it is also good for a sense of calm and a sense of responsibility. And that is exactly what we want to achieve with Ride With Me. Let's just go back very quickly. We said that, you know, this is not just for youth, but it's for guardians or parents as well, right? It's for them to feel safe. It's for them to feel calm about um, youth using this application to uh, travel with, you know, with their friends, essentially. So we want to, we want to tease that out. And... Um, we're going to do it. So let's take a look. I'm going to go into the blue, bluesy, bluesy area, 205, let's say. Um, that looks, oh, that looks terrible. Well, I hate it. What about this? Uh, what about, what about, uh, you see me moving like one value up and one value down. It looks like I'm doing nothing, but there is actually a difference. Um, hopefully you can tell. Uh, very minor, maybe, yeah. Two numbers, you should definitely see a difference, or at least in my eyes, uh, there is a, a very, very, there's a nice difference there. Uh, so let's take a look. Uh, yeah, so see, these two colors, we, do, we wouldn't want to place them together as one, but take a look at this. What if we said, meep, meep. oh, nice. We have something like that. Is that France? It is. Hi, friends. There we go. Now we know why, they're, why their flag is so good. It's because they use these two colors. Anyway, so what my point is, adding something like uh, white or off-white cream, for example, would be great uh, to, to use. Uh, let's see. Let's see. I'm going to add a cream. And uh, let's see if a cream would be like F, FFF. That's pure white. And then like uh, FF. Uh, e e f f whoopsies that's not what i wanted there we go that's what i wanted um so i wanted something like this i don't i don't think it will look that great for us um i don't know so i don't know therefore let's start uh practicing this let's start using these colors Whoa, my goodness. Jeez Louise. These are, these are energetic, eh? Like, poof, look at that. Um, so now we know that these colors are, no, that's a nice, that's a nice red, nice red. Happy about that. Uh, we don't want to use these colors as, as very, these are action items, right? That's why we need we need to separate we need to separate like you know some branding colors versus some like action colors and then some like secondary colors um the the blue and the and the red that i i have um created here wouldn't be great for secondary colors because look at this this is like very uh in your face and uh, we wouldn't want to do that but like beep, you know 
a nice secondary color is usually we go for something that's a little bit darker, something like this. Um, anyway, it's a color. Let's see. I'm going to derive a, 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 very, a warm gray, a, a warm black. I don't, don't love it, but, but see how it looks way better than the blue? Now I'm really able to see that red, and it, it stands out a, a lot. So uh, it, it, that's good. I like that. That is, uh, that is what we want for action colors, not for secondary colors. That's not what we want. So I'm, I'm afraid that we still have some work to do there on the action color side of things. But other than that, um, for action, uh, action colors, I like it myself. Um, but I think, see, oh my goodness, what is that? I think that we can take some secondary colors from here. I remember how I told you that I have some, I haven't, I think we're gonna be using some of these colors here. Um, something like that color, let's see. Yeah. Boom. So, I just took a sample of the pavement of one of Marina's mood boards and I got this one. I love it. This is a nice looking gray, like dark, dark blue gray. Awesome. I'm going to do another one though. And I'm looking for something that's a little bit less, a little bit lighter. And we can see this pavement section. Uh, there we go. You can see that, right? Nice. Pavement section right here. That's lighter, but that's almost yellow. Uh, this is also almost yellow. It's just dirty. Those are roads. They're, they're dirty. That's okay. Um, what else can we see here? Man, this yellow, it's amazing. Maybe we can use it. And uh, I like this yellow better, but this yellow is not that bad. Ooh, tough choices. We, we have action colors right now, so I don't want to use yet another action color. I, I want to round it out a little bit with some secondary colors and then we can bring it back down, bring it back to primary and, and focus on that. That's no problem. Um, uh, the, the red and the blue really work together well. Okay, what about... Um, choosing colors here. Don't mind me, folks. There we go. Oh, that was a nice... Because it was kind of color okay so we have oh, that's also a very nice one okay so we have quite a few grays that we can now start building into this in uh, this color scheme for now I'm gonna do it white and uh, by the way we're gonna use this when we're, when we're more solid and when we're more convinced of the colors that we've chosen uh, skateboards yeah still okay let me let's see Okay, you know what? I have, I have like four grays, so let's go for that. Um, we're gonna use this when we're a little bit more convinced as to the color that we're using. It's gonna look, whoopsies, it's gonna look something like that, right? I'm gonna update the color names and et cetera so that uh, the Right With Me team can use it on their project. So, um, I hate this blue. This blue was just for to explain a thing. Um, Perfect. I'm gonna put this at the bottom and uh, uh, boop, boop, boop. there we go. Okay, this is just to show that the white is there and that um, we support the French movement. Okay, that's the thing. I don't love that it looks like France, but but that's just because I have it in a flag configuration, right? Like it, it's not actually gonna look like it. Um, Okay, so we have we have different grays, and let's start using them. Uh, I'm going to just very quickly create these things because we have like four grays, and I want to just show the difference between them. So I started here. That's the one that we see at the bottom. Then I went to here. Then we, okay, so I'm going to use this one. Um, beep. Nice, very nice. That's that's great for like copy like like fonts um typography that, that's a very nice gray so 
happy we we found that one. Let's see this one right here. This is a, a more warm gray, which, like I said, is what we wanted to to achieve. Uh, we want this warmth to be to be all across our um, application. This is a light one, and whoops, it could be. It could not be enough, unfortunately. Oh, yes, it could. I'm just lying to you. When it's something that's very, very light, we don't want to. We we don't want to go ahead with it uh, necessarily because it doesn't provide enough contrast. And you know, if we use it for typography, then it's way too light. If we use it for a background, then it might be a little bit too dark. You know, it's like in the limbo. It, it either needs to be like almost white, or it needs to be. You know, it needs to have contrast enough to allow it to stand up, stand up by itself. Um, this is the one, right? Sorry. That's Canadian sensing. Sorry. Okay. Okay. So, let's see. What if we had um, another one of this and then we did this one? See, this... Oh. That looks really great, right? Because it is a cold gray. And then take a look at this. This gray will look very good with this one right here. Hold on. Boom. Because it's a very warm gray. The problem is we need to find a middle ground between the two of them. The, the red will speak to the warm gray, and the blue will speak to the cool gray. Uh-oh, right? <laughs> Uh, okay, okay. I just got message from Robert. That crosswalk orange, it is really awesome. So I'm gonna add it here just so that we don't forget about it because we might forget about it um, with all the stuff that we're talking about. Uh, boop, nope. There we go. And it, it's not going to be like that bright, you know, it's not going to be like that overpowering, but it, it's always going to, it, it, it can, it, we can create a color from that, right? And it's, it's going to be great, you know, when we're finished with this and people ask, hey, how, how did you create the colors and how did you guys make up the colors? We're going to be able to say, well, our inspiration were the streets, you know, were sidewalks and, and signs and pavement. That is something that I'm really looking forward to. So instead of like just coming out of colors from blue, that's where we do mood boards and that's why um, that work is really, really important uh, to, to create it at, right at the beginning. So again, awesome work, Marina. Okay, I want uh, a medium of this and of that. Uh, in code, this would be extremely easy to do. Unfortunately, we're not in code and we need to do this by hand. So. Nothing has changed, by the way, because the hue, especially when we're in the grays, it pretty much remains the same. We need to change the, it's, there we go. So that is what we need to do, change the saturation a little bit. So, uh, so I'm going to find a middle ground here, 300, 219. Grays sometimes are the hardest to get to to really um, the reason why is because such a such a minimal change in the saturation makes the the grays really uh, different. It's not like, you know, when I move like two points on the blue that you see on the right hand side, not much is gonna happen in the saturation. You're gonna see a little bit of difference. But if I change two points of saturation in the gray, you're gonna immediately see it as uh, as an orange, as a purple in this case, because I'm in that, uh, in that hue range. So we need to be very careful that we, uh, Oh, there we go. Uh, I'm in between the six and the seven. Six, maybe, because it's a bit more warmer. So, take a look at this. So, and I hope, I hope that, yeah, yeah. Oh, I'm feeling good about it. Feeling good. Okay, so, this is one. 
one gray, this is another gray that we had. We wanted to find a nice even medium. And I think we did, right? I think we did. I think we did. I'm going to go ahead and, and say the yes, we did. So um, now we can say, okay, cool, you know. Uh, now we can start using maybe, I, I'm going to try it on a background. It's going to look ugly because grays as a background is not, it's not the best. But, um, but just uh, nice. So, yeah, sure, the blue really, really works out well in that gray. And what about the red? Moment of truth here. Yes, it does. Okay, sweet. We found a gray that will work with both warm and cool colors. Um, it is, has a little bit more warmth thing than, than cool. Like it's not as cool as as like you know I'm partial to. I'm partial to more cool colors, but this is a little bit more warm. It is again because of all the same reasons that we've talked about, which is the warmth that we want to evoke and the. Um, I'm so happy about this, Gray. Uh, all the warmth they want to evoke and the trust in, in the brand and in the application. So, um, yes, yes, let's let's do it. I, I commit this, and I commit that, and I commit this. So these are action colors, and we have a very nice copy slash background color, uh, all-purpose color, really. Uh, I need more secondary colors. But you know what, before that, there we go. I'm going to, um, this spot is still empty. The reason why this spot will still be empty is because um, I want one more action color. This can hopefully be used for seldom things. Um, and we'll take a look at that. Okay, and not just that, but we also need a white. Now here's the thing in design. In design, we don't really use full white. Feel like a pure white. Um, no, you know, no. Same as like full black. We don't really do full black. Take a look at that. That is a 97% brightness of of white. You can still perceive it as white, really. Like if I asked you, if I asked you, hey, like what what color is this one in the middle? You probably would say would say white. I mean, it's behind a very pure white background so um it, it sort of uh, the point is moot a little bit here but um there we go there we go so what color is the one in the middle you would say white well actually it isn't right it's not white it's a very subtle gray aha so that's the key in design here is not to use very pure colors uh, i really like that color for our whites so i will commit this as well um there we go. Is that it? Yeah. Kind of looks like kind of ugly there because it has no border, so it sort of bleeds in. Meh. Okay. That's all right. I need to make this better. Okay. So now let's go back into our our third action color. Let's see if it, if it's gonna work for us. Um. And uh, this is where we. This is what we got from the pedestrian sign. Now, that's a little bit too harsh. So let me just see if I can find something that's a little bit less, uh, like that one. Yeah, there we go. That's a nice color. Also a nice color. So we said that yellow is like happiness, you know? Yellow is like sunshine. Yellow could also be like warning in, in, in North American culture. Uh, so we want to use it with caution <laughs> get it did you get the pun uh oops there you go use it with uh with caution um a little bit oh my goodness this is a beautiful yellow this is a beautiful yellow it's almost like it's orange honestly it's not, it's not really yellow it's more orange which is perfect right perfect we started this whole thing with orange and why we wanted to use orange and and uh very nice Ah, very nice. Okay, so that's not to say that it's perfect. So let's see. Wonder if we can make this a little bit more red, like more like blood orange, oh, like sort of like that a little bit. But then the problem with this is that it, it starts competing with this red. See that? Might not be what we want. 
And then if we do yellow, yellow looks very fine. And that it complements. It doesn't compete. So not bad. Uh, if I want to make it, there we go, something like this. That is like a uh, warning, right? Okay, I'm going to do this one thing here. Just playing with the brightness and playing with the saturation of this to, to sort of uh, try to try to get this marigold. Yeah, that is correct. This might not be. This might not be. It. I mean, man, it could be it. It could be it. Okay, so I'm going to go back into this general color, and again, I'm going to start start playing with it. Start playing. Oh, goodness. Wait for it. Wait for it. There we go. Sometimes my computer acts up a little bit, but that's okay. So, let's see. Ah, ah, ah. There we go. Getting it, I'm getting it. Ninety nine, ninety eight, ninety eight, hundred, ninety eight, hundred, ninety eight, ninety nine. Ninety nine in brightness and um, uh, okay. So we have these three different ones. Can you tell the difference between them? Is different I'm gonna just move move this a little bit. There you go. Group it just so that I don't lose it. Um, so see the difference between these three. The difference is that this is a, is is a very similar saturation to the blue and the red that we have already committed to our style guide right here. So it, that's great. Not just that, but it, it doesn't make you you know it, it it's like street. It's like streety. You know, like it's perfect because we 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 took from pedestrian sign. So like it's it's like a, a, awesome. That's exactly where we took it from. But like it really, this yellow really, I really like because it's not, this one, the reason why it didn't work was because it was very dense. It was, it was deep. It was deep. It had a lot of color to it. But by us desaturating it a little bit and brightening it down just a touch, we were able to, to work with the saturation to match a little bit to what we have here. Oh, yeah. Perfect. Okay. So we have done it. We have three action colors. Might be too much, and we will work with this, right? Like these are just colors. We we haven't we have an interface here, but again, it's like a sample interface. It's not something that uh, that we have. Uh, whenever I, I work with with an interface, I have colors in mind, and I start using colors. But the, the colors um, quickly modify themselves and quickly change because you know something will won't really. I won't really like how something looks, etc. Uh, so things evolve over time for sure. Uh, so by no means will this be the last of, of these colors, but it's a great start. And I'm actually very excited that we were able to do this in only 43 minutes. Let's continue though. One more color and this color needs to be very similar to our secondary color, just a little bit darker and a little bit more, more, more punch to it. Um, by the way, let me just do this. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Sweet. Awesome. Oh, that's so good. Ah, oh, so good. Okay. Um, so, this won't look good. You know what? Like, depending on what branding, you know, what we want to go for, this does work, right? This is a... This works, but it really, it very, very, this would work. Something like, the, oh, something like this would work. It, but it just depends on, like, the, the type of brain that we want to do. Um, but these colors are good. Maybe that blue now, now, see, now, ah. Ah. Uh, the thing with, with colors is that you love them and then you start hating them. There we go. Just a little bit less less punch to be more neutral there you go that that looks a little bit better 
That's the one. Perfect, perfect. Top yellow. Yes, Marina chose top yellow, and that's exactly which one we go when we went for. So perfect. Um, the one that has a little saturation. This one. Ah, uh, so happy we found this yellow. And you never know. Like it could become our our main interface color. Um, it could. It could. Hey. There are applications that do use more like a orangey, like Swarm. If you've ever used Swarm on iOS or Android even, Swarm uses um, a, a orange main interface color and it works really well for them. So um, I don't see why it wouldn't work for us. There you go. Okay, not too bad. Um, uh, last but not least, we have color name, uh, color name here. So I, I'll, I'll take care of all these hex colors um, to hand over to the Ride With Me team. For us, for, you know, for this specific purpose, we don't, we don't need to worry about that too much. So we have, um, let's see, these colors, we have this one. I'm going to, So the top is the one that we have when we committed it. We it was kind of hard to uh, to find it. Remember, so we uh, we we have it, and I want to move it now because I know that that gray was derived from like two different grays that we chose from the pavement, and then that gray we sort of combined it. So I don't want to move it. Uh, I know how hard that was to to get, but what I do want to get is a. Um, I want to try. I, I want to. I want to go down swinging here. Um, see if we can get a bit of a bit of a brighter tone to this to this uh, gray, but not lose it. You know, not lose the gray, not not make it like washed out. And you know, this is great for like horizontal lines in applications. Not just that, but it's going to be great for fields and for text elements, inputs, text areas, etc., etc., etc. All these things that. I consider it to be extremely important in uh, in Rye with me and their application. So if we see something like this, we have maybe, maybe, hey, I'm starting to idiot here, but maybe this is how the field will look like. It'll be like a very uh, flat design. Uh, the background, the border could be this border, right? It could also be that border. That border doesn't look bad at all. But, and you know, just so you can see it, like this is where you would say like uh, uh, username. Um, we haven't even gone into fonts, have we? There you go, right? Something like that. Bad font, bad font, but you, you get what I mean. Uh, but maybe if we make it a little bit darker, so so this this is this and then this is um, a little bit lighter like uh, like this and then we also have to start designing see interface design is hard because we start we have to start designing um, disabled colors and enabled colors enabled colors we have we have all these uh, all the grays and, uh, and all the action colors so I think we're good there but like disabled colors is something that interface you often forget, and you forget very, very quickly how important it is to have a, de a disabled color such as something like this, for example. So if we dim the opacity and use this gray, which we just, let's see. Oh, yeah, it's this gray. Um, then, you know, the difference between this and something like that is palpable isn't it like there we go you can tell that one is active and one is inactive right you can so let's go for this and um i'm gonna put it here there you go i i'm still not sold on on the the combination between these two grays but um but let's see. Let's see. It, it just might work. Sure. That works, right? How about this white and this like gray here? Very nice. 
But take a look at this. What did we do? Oh my goodness, that works, doesn't it? You know what? This will be like a, a, a team decision. Uh, I'll debrief with the Ride With Me uh, team. And we will choose, you know, we will say, hey, listen, like, do we want to go for for yellow? Which one do we like the most? I do think that maybe, maybe, again, we haven't created any any real uh, interface work yet, but I'm leaning to, to think that yellow, uh, it, it's either yellow, uh, yellow, orange, or, or red. It's either, it's one or the other for, like, a very, very primary action color. It could be both, however, but... Um, I'm lean to I'm lean towards one or the other. Um, however, it could be it could be both. Um, I do like that though. That is very nice. That is very nice. The rare and blues are nice too. Yeah, yeah, that's true. Um, okay, so just so that oh, we have very some. Mm. Something very nice. Now, keep in mind, if we do end up going for this yellow, I'm going to need to modify that gray because this gray was derived from the combination, you know, not, not really, it's not, it wasn't scientific. It was like how it looked really, but the combination of the, the warm of the red and the cool of the blue. So we derived that gray. If we use something like this yellow, it's not as warm, right? So this would need to be, uh, the gray would need to be bumped up a little bit. Um... Yeah, so Marina says that, there we go, the blue and yellow is more pow, and it may be, may be exhausting to look at too much. And you know what? I do agree with that. This is, this style and this uh, color treatment is something that we want to use um, in buttons. We want to be using very, uh, headers, right? Very seldomly. Um, this is why we want to be using like nice grays and a very nice secondary color. So um we will uh we'll we'll try both at least we have these colors to work with honestly i'm really happy that we got through this okay so um oh my goodness i forgot i started looking at fonts um i started looking at fonts and i forgot to bring it with me bring the little note but that's okay i think i have them in mind uh okay so let's let's uh we have all the colors yeah you know what no i've done this before i've removed this i've removed all of this uh, i've deleted things and then i'm like why did i delete them why that gray was so amazing and now i don't have it um okay so let's start and let's start we, I know that we only have seven minutes, but I'm just going to give you very, very, uh, a very brief like overview of what we're going to be talking about next week for uh, typography. Now, I do expect typography to be a little bit uh, easier. It is something that, at least for me, it's um, I like something and I sort of stick to it, and and, and I will see it through. Uh, I just we just have to make sure that the heading that we choose and the subheading that we choose, that essentially the display typography and the copy typography are very very well matched we want something that, that that really play well plays well together okay red and blue is more appealing okay i think we're gonna go for red and blue because that's what the ride with me team agrees on so there you go i'm gonna still keep that yellow and that yellow will be used for maybe maybe some like uh different CTA treatments, or maybe some iconography. Iconography could be yellow. You see what I mean? So that color is still there. Um, we can do a little bit more with this, these grays. This gray, I'm not 100% sold on. So we will go back and, and explore it a little bit more. What we also didn't do, and what we, we should do, is we should do tint explorations. So um, this is what tint explorations are. You'll see it in one second. I might not even get to talk to typo talk about typography because this is actually very fun. So um, this is tint explorations. It's you know every color that we choose, every color that we choose, it, it, we don't we. 
I mean, yes, we, once the brand is very, very established, we can use just one value of red. But when the brand is very young, it's, it's new, and, and, and the style guide is still being, still learning, right? Um, these colors are still learning. That's, that's the way that I see it. The colors are, are living. Uh, and the colors are learning about the interface and about, uh, about each other. So we have something like this. Oops, there you go. When we have something uh, like a red, we can do tint exploration. So we can start playing around with the tint of these and the, the essentially adding or subtracting um, white, uh, white or black, right? Depending, depending on what we, what we want to achieve. There you go. Uh, there you go. So, um, and I'm sorry, I totally forgot to talk about tint explorations, but this is what we start, can start doing, you know? We can start exploring with tints and we can, we can say, you know what? I mean, this, this blue, the, our primary blue works and when it works well, but let's take a look at how a bit of a darker blue could work for, and it, it could be great for, um, I can see this working extremely well in like footer treatments in which like we could do like a different tint of footer. The the bottom could be like uh, one shade of blue and then uh, and then right up below it, right above it could be another tint of blue. It could work. Um, now this was very easily done by me just using, just modifying the brightness of it. Uh, tint is not like that um, easy sometimes. It came out very well, but these, very dark ones I think we could do some work in in, in making them a little bit better uh, that red looks nice though but that blue could that dark blue could use some work so look at that now we have these all these colors and um, the same we can do the same for yellow okay nice 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 okay so people are, seem to be liking the red and they seem to be liking the yellow um, uh, the, the blue I'm sorry now I'm gonna do yellow and I'm going to do very quickly here. Again, more tint explorations, but isn't this looking nice? I mean, I should have done this from the start. I do apologize. And I'm taking like arbitrary steps down. Arbitrary steps down. I'm doing like a 10% brightness down, then a 15% brightness down. And then I'm going to start doing here. I'm going to do a 20 down. 25 down. 25 down. There we go. Oh man. All right. Now grays, I don't usually do tint expressions on grays because grays are very uh, particular. You know, as soon as we modify the gray, then it's a whole different gray, you know? Grays are very hard. Um, <laughs> so Robert likes yellow and he seems to be alone in that, in that boat. Uh, it's okay, we'll, we'll take a look at it and we'll, uh, we'll see this together. Um, okay. So, you know what? We're out of time. <laughs> we are completely out of time. So, whew, we did color explorations. We didn't do type explorations or button treatment, but you know what? These two we will do at once next week. Uh, I, I don't think type explorations will take us that long. And button treatments are always a lot of fun. Um, in button treatments, we're going to be a little bit more... Um, uh, holistic. We're going to not just take a look at buttons, but we, we're also going to take a look at forms, take a look at text areas, inputs, et cetera, et cetera. You know, the disabled look, enabled, um, all those things. Um, very, very, um, it, very fun, honestly. Very fun. Design love of model. We usually do design love bombs. I say, hey, this, check out this portfolio website, check out this artwork. Uh, this, today is, it's a, it's a photo. And this is a photo of the, hold it, the outdoors, because <laughs> what better way and what better inspiration than the outdoors? I mean, honestly, we saw that here with Marina's mood boards. This is all the outdoors. That is where design comes from, right? That is where inspiration comes from. It doesn't come from staring at a computer. It comes from going outside, taking photos, seeing what, what works for you and what, what makes you excited about design. Um, to me, you now this makes me excited about design, you know, so check that out. Go outside. Get inspired that way. Uh, music that I'll be moving this week, Gaslight Anthem, Handwritten is their album. Check them out. No quote today of the week because I didn't read anything, honestly. If you have feedback, get, get in touch with me. And uh, next week we will be once again 
guest designing for Ride With Me. Uh, this was extremely fun. So uh, thank you so much. And I will uh, I'll see you next week. All right.